I think it was absolutely scandalous. I think them children should have never been brought off that bus. There was easily 60, 70 guards here. They're different people coming in from a different country. They don't know the way the law works over here. When I go on holidays, I do be afraid of the law over there. I don't know the way they are. They're a lot more strict. They don't know. Nobody really knew because there's no communication whatsoever. So people would expect it was single men because that's what has come into the town everywhere else. Um, when the people did see the women and children, they backed off. It was the public order unit that provoked people. And that caused the upset and the roaring. Nobody was roaring at them children or them mothers because everybody was quite upset here after what happened. We dropped um, ties, clothes, everything. And the racket hall would not open the door until the media left the door. They didn't want people seeing that. It's, it's very clear that we have taken our fair share in. We, we welcome people into our square. We're, we're, we're not racist in any shape or form, even though the media has portrayed that, which is totally, totally wrong, and I take offence to that. What happened Monday is a, a, a scandal for, for Rodrigo Gorman to send down heavy-handed men to push people and shove women and children is totally, totally wrong. It was a peaceful pro pro um, protest, but um, as I say, what happened could have been avoided. All they had to do, or anyone, the government department or Gardaí, was to make contact, sit down and talk and come to some solution, but no. As far as I know, there was literally no, no, no communications, but as far as I know, again, the councillors' TDs had received information Thursday. It was families coming to Ross Gray. But then again, as far as we know, there was men that came. So it's a mixture. Again, it goes back to the communications is not good. And if Rodrig is not going to straighten up the communications, it's a recipe for disaster all over the country. What do you think of the way the media has covered this issue since, since it's all taken place? Look, some of it is not so bad. Some of it is absolutely untrue. Um, they're portrayed as all here as racist. We're not racist. I've worked with Ukrainians, lovely people. My boss is from Pakistan. I work for her for a year now. We're not racist. It's not about that. It's not about race. It's not about men. It's not about women. It's not about children. It's about there's nowhere for them to go. They might say, oh, we'll get them jobs. Where are you going to get them jobs? We're going to get them a doctor. Where are you going to get them a doctor? We don't have them. We don't have them. We simply don't have them. Do you know, it was the last hotel that was left here in the town. There must have been 40 odd staff in there that now don't know if they have jobs, when they'll have a job, what their job is going to be. Um, a lot of young people, a lot of people that are in college that won't get a part time job anywhere else in the town because there's nowhere for them to get a job. Everywhere is full. Everywhere is full. To put it very straight, it's disgraceful the way Ross Gray was portrayed because I know nearly everyone in Ross Gray, good, genuine people. And for the media to turn around and to blacklist them like that is totally, totally wrong. The point is, and what has an awful lot of people upset on, is we're full. The doctors are full, the dentists are full, we have no, we have no guardie. The guard station is closed more than it's open, the services are not in place. If anyone in the right mind would, put, would, would actually put services in place first and then integrate people, but then as I say we have over 600 foreign nationals in tower. I think we've pulled our fair share. I'd say we're, we're unheard and I'd say the young people, I think there's anger, there's a lot of anger, not towards them people that are staying in that hotel, towards the government. There's, like, I have a friend that moved back from Dublin two years ago and she had to fight to get back into her family GP. Um, she's still looking for a place to stay. Two years on, I text Paul Fogarty that is housing a single man in the town in June. More, see, more than six months ago, I've not even re received a message back. So, like, he has these places, but he's choosing to house single men and not help the local community. How does that make sense? Is there anybody who you feel is representing you politically at the minute? Shane Lee. I think Shane Lee and Michael Lowry, yeah. Uh, Shane Lee being the local councillor yeah. and... Yeah. yeah. As far as political parties go, do you feel like you're, you're being represented currently by the people in Leicester House? To be honest, I don't know. I don't really know a lot about the, polit the political side. I'm just here because I don't agree with this whatsoever. I would, I would just turn around and say that the government of the day has done a shocking bad job. They're in power and as I said they're doing a bad job. I, After that I'm not going to make any comments on who and what but the government have no plans and they're at fault for everything that's happening. For the anger that's spilling around it's the government's fault.